In this screencast, I'm going to be doing some examples of how to solve triangles using law of sines. So for our first example, you can have a triangle with side A equal to 28, B equal to 15, and the measure of angle A is 110 degrees. Now to even know that I'm going to use law of sines to solve this, I have to figure out what information I'm given. And what I'm given in this particular example is side, side, angle. If you don't understand why that is, if you just sketch any arbitrary triangle and label it, angle A, side A, angle B, side B, angle C, and side C. So I know angle A is 110 degrees, and I know side A is 28, and I know side B is equal to 15. So the information I'm given, okay, I've got two sides and one angle, but it's not the included angle. If I knew angle C, it would be side angle side, but it's not the included angle, so it's side side angle. So how do I solve a triangle with side side angle? Well, side side angle is the ambiguous case. In the ambiguous case, I'm going to use law of sines eventually if there is a triangle to solve. This flowchart is going to help me understand uh, how many triangles exist with those particular measures. So our angle is obtuse, 110 degrees. So I go to this side of the chart. Now the terminology opposite and other. You're given two sides. You're given one side that's opposite the angle you're given, and then you're just given another side. So here I'm given side A, which is opposite the given angle, and then B, which is just going to be, in this example, the other side. So opposite is 28 and other is 15. So opposite is bigger than other. So that means in this example, there's one triangle. Now that I know that, I'm going to solve it using law of sines. When you use law of sines, it's important to understand that there's always going to be one letter for which you know the angle and the side. And every proportion I write when I'm solving, I'm going to use sine 110 over 28. That ratio is going to be half of every proportion I use. Now, law of sines, I guess I'll write up here at the top of the page, sine of A over A equals sine of B over B equals sine of C over C. So either I'm going to use sine of B over B or sine of C over C. It wouldn't make any sense to use sine of C over C because I don't know angle C or side C. So I'm going to go with sine of B over 15. And that way there's only one variable. Something important to understand right away is that my unknown is an angle. So that tells me I'm going to be use the, using the arc sine function to solve this at some point. In other words, I'm going to know what ratio sine of B is equal to, and I'm going to use the inverse sine or the arc sine function to find the angle that has that particular ratio. But the first thing to do is just to cross multiply. So I get 28 sine B is equal to 1, I'm sorry, is equal to 15 sine 110. And then I divide both sides by 28. You get sine of B is equal to 15 sine 110 over 28. And the right-hand side of this equation is just a number. It's equal to sine of B, and sine is always less than 1 because it's, uh, it's a leg over a hypotenuse, so it's always going to be less than 1, but it's some, it's some decimal. It doesn't really matter to me what that number is. If you like doing it in multiple steps, I could evaluate this and rewrite it as an equation, sine b equals some decimal. Or I could put it all in the calculator in one step. So I'll show you how I can put it into the graphing calculator in one step. So, clear out of that. I know I want the arc sine function. Yeah, that means I'm putting in a ratio and it's going to give me the angle. Right. And if we go back here, I want 15 times sine 110 divided by 128. So 15 sine 110 divided by 28. And sometimes it's good to make sure you know, you've closed all your parentheses as that 
going to do what I want in terms of order of operations. And it is. It's going to do this product. Right? It's going to evaluate sine of 110, multiply that ratio by 15, and then divide the product by 28. And then it's going to plug that ratio in and tell me what angle uh, has that sine ratio. And you could probably guess what I forgot to do on my calculator. You always want to make sure you're in degree mode. If you don't, you're going to get a lot of answers wrong. So I put my calculator in. Now I can just hit enter again, and it's going to do the last thing I just did. And that gives me the right answer, 30.22 degrees. Yeah, so if you get an unreasonable answer, like negative something for an angle, uh, you know, which in this case it's a triangle, it can't be a negative angle, uh, you might want to check and make sure you're in degree mode. The default on the graphing calculator is just to be in radian mode. So you always want to check that. So 30.23 degrees. So that's the measure of angle B. So now if I look in the information I know, I know two of my angles and two of my sides. I still have one side to find and one angle to find. So I know angle A, side A, angle B, and side B. I need to find C. Now remember what I said, that this proportion is the one that I'm always going to be using, or that ratio is always going to go into every proportion. So let's go back down here, sine 110 over 28. Okay, now I know everything for B, all that's left is C. So I have sine C over C. Problem is there's two variables. But fortunately, in any triangle, if I know two angles, I can figure out the third. So angle A is equal to 110 degrees. Measure of angle B is equal to 30.23 degrees. If I add those together, I get 140.23 degrees. Subtract that from 180. And you get 39.77 degrees. So that's the measure of angle C. So that's actually the fifth piece of information that I need to know. And I can erase this over here and fill in that 39.77 degrees. Now I have a proportion with one variable. Now this proportion is going to be different than the other. In this case, my variable is a side. I know both my angles. So I'm not going to hit second sign this time. I'm just going to hit sign of the angle when I enter this into the calculator. First I'm going to cross multiply. C times sine of 110 is equal to 28 times sine of 39.77. And I'm divide both sides by sine of 110. And side C is equal to 28 times sine 39.77 divided by sine of 110. So I think I'm ready to put this in the calculator. 28 times sine 39.77 divided by sine of 110. And again, take a look and make sure order of operations is going to do what I want it to. It's going to multiply the side length times this ratio and divide it by sine 110. I think that's what I want. And that should give me side C, 19.06. And that's side C. So at that point, I've solved for all three of the missing links, and the triangle has been solved.